Howdy folks and welcome back to War Thunder Ground Forces with the Mighty Jingles. Today we've got a realistic battle for you in the Tiger E, driven for us by Sky Raider 98. I sent this replay in last week, I've been itching to get it up because this really is a pretty spectacular game. It's realistic battle, just in case I didn't already mention that. And unlike in some of my previous War Thunder Ground Forces realistic battle videos, this time around you're seeing it pretty much exactly as the player saw it when he was fighting the battle. What do you mean by that, Jingles? I've turned target markers off. I've never really been sure whether or not I should or shouldn't include the target markers when I'm doing a War Thunder realistic battle video. Um, on the plus side, it gives you a better idea of what's going on when you're watching the video. On the downside, you don't understand exactly how hard it can be when you're playing a War Thunder Ground Forces realistic battle to stay aware of your surroundings. You can see, for example, that Sky Raider 98 is constantly scanning the horizon with the binoculars. He's constantly looking around. He's got his head on a swivel in order to spot the threats before they spot him. He hasn't seen any enemy tanks yet. More importantly, no enemy tanks have seen him yet. But he knows that Control Point Charlie, just up ahead, was being capped. So there have to be some enemy tanks nearby. Right around this corner, just under and around that bridge. Nothing seen. Wait, there. It's a potato truck. Kill it. Potato truck, dead. The potato truck, however, is not alone. Do you see the movement? Far end of the bridge. Yep, Sky Raider's seen it. It's an IS-2. IS-2's seen him as well, but Sky Raider is quicker on the trigger. And that looks like an ammunition fire. And that's put an end to the IS-2. Two kills. Realistic battle. Wait a minute, was that an IS-2? What are the Russians doing in North Africa? <laughs> is this the famous Russian North African offensive that we read about in school? Um, yeah. Realistic battle in War Thunder doesn't always refer to the scenario more the difficulty level. It certainly used to be the case that if you found yourself on a North African map you would only ever be fighting Germans, Americans or the British. That put a bit of a strain on the matchmaker however, so in order to keep the battle queue times down, Gaijin have basically opened up all of the maps and all of the scenarios to pretty much everybody, regardless of historical accuracy. So, we're looking for rations. There are the rations. Charlie's been capped. Bravo's been capped. Alpha is in enemy hands. Oh. Bravo is changing hands. So there are enemy tanks at Bravo. That much we know. Again, scanning the horizon. Is that a tank? That is a tank. That was a tank. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, that's not a particularly new feature in War Thunder. I don't know how he recognised the fact that there was a tank. Oh, what crap, there's another one. We'll come on to this in a moment. It's hit. It's not down. He knows he's here now. Starts opening up with the machine guns. This is going to obscure that guy's target picture and make it harder for him to aim properly. Second shot. Nope, not good enough. Only damages his viewports. Wait, he's hit. Well, it wasn't Sky Raider, but I'm sure he's grateful for the assistance. But going back to that camouflage T-3485, the guy basically just looks like a bush with a gun barrel sticking out of it. And I don't have a problem with that in principle, it's certainly realistic. If you were to search, you'd be able to find any number of different pictures of, for example, German tank destroyers, Stugs in particular, driving around looking like bushes with gun barrels sticking out of them. Tanks were, and are, camouflaged in order to increase the chances that you're going to be able to get the first shot off in combat. I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I think it's a pretty cool addition to the game. It makes very little difference in arcade battle because the camouflage is a decoration. It doesn't actually affect the visibility statistic of the tank. If your tank crew spot an enemy vehicle, that enemy vehicle gets a target marker placed over the top of it in arcade battle, regardless of what camouflage has been affixed to the exterior of that tank. But there are no target markers in Realistic and Simulator. Oh, another enemy tank. Well, <laughs> was another enemy tank. Kill number three. In Realistic and Simulator, 
the ability to visually spot and identify a tank as an enemy tank and get the first shot off before he or she shoots at you is crucial. And so camouflage really does make a big difference in Realistic and Simulator. And again, don't have a problem with that either. Where I think things get very, very dodgy is in how you go about actually getting the camouflage to put onto your tank. And I'm not talking about camouflage paint patterns here. Say, for example, I wanted to unlock the standard desert camouflage for my Mach 10 Centurion. All I would have to do was either pay 200 golden eagles or play the Mark 10 Centurion and knock out 315 enemy tanks with it. Now that's a lot of tanks, but the option is at least there. I can earn it, I don't have to pay real money for it. The camouflage decorations, however, you do have to pay real money for. There's no way of earning them just by playing the game. And they're bloody expensive. But just one of these camouflage bushes isn't going to do the trick. You can buy a single camouflage bush for 500 gold, stick it over the front of your tank's turret, and from the front, well, your tank is going to look like a tank that's got a bush stuck over the front of the turret. You're going to need multiple bushes in order to break up the outline of the tank. And that can get very, very expensive. What some players will do if they can't afford to spend thousands of gold needles on completely covering their tank and breaking the outline up is they'll just buy one or two and they'll use them to hide their weak spots. And again, I don't have a problem with that. It's the fact that you can only buy these camouflage bushes with gold that I have issues with. Anyway, I've said my point, you know what I think. I'm sure you'll all have plenty to say about this issue in the comments. Knock yourselves out, that's what it's for. Meanwhile, the Charlie capture point just up ahead where Sky Raider got his first two kills has changed hands again. It was briefly under control of the Russian team. But there's at least one tank on Sky Raider's team now over there taking it back off them. So where did those Russian tanks go? They can't have gone too far. They have to still be around here somewhere. What's actually happened over there is those sneaky bloody Russians have taken Charlie and then they're just lurking around waiting to see who comes to take it back. And there's one T-44 in particular who's just taken out two friendly tanks. So Sky Raider has come to see if he can avenge them. And there he is. There's the T-44. Gotcha. Killed number four. Oh shit, there's another one. He was not alone. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that is though, I can't really make it out. Whoever he is, he's not interested in getting hit. Or is he? Oh dear oh dear oh dear. Oh well, kill number five. Wait, is there another one on the far side of that bridge support? There is! He's hit, but nope. Very very minor damage. Right, Tiger versus T-34. Well, it's probably a T-34-85, so... 85mm gun. Entirely capable of penetrating a Tiger's front armor. But he is angling very, very well. Sky Raider's second shot does minor track damage. Third shot just ricochets clean off the side armor. He's trying to put one in the... Um, at least I think he's trying to put one in the hull armor on the side there, just above the tracks, but it's just not happening. Oh, he's going to fire back. But ding! <laughs> <laughs> Two can play at that game, Boris. Right. Come on. Show yourself. It will all be over soon. That'll do. Yep, got him. Kill number six? I'm going to have to check. Yes, yes, that is kill number six. Six kills. War Thunder, Ground Forces, Realistic Battle. And now to capture Charm. Ah, walk the bulldog. Shoot, kill it. Get, wait, no. Oh, it's on your team. Um, <laughs> well, of course it is. Everybody knows the Germans and the Americans fought the Russians in North Africa. Yeah, you're just going to have to roll with it, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't pay to think about it too much. I mean, it's like I said earlier, the uh, the realistic part of War Thunder Realistic Battles doesn't actually refer to the composition of the forces. It used to, but they ran into problems with the matchmaker. If you're trying to play a North African battle and there was nobody playing in British tanks, then you could queue with your German tanks all day. You would never get to battle. And so they've done it purely for gameplay reasons. And again, I don't have a problem with that. It lets you get into battle faster. Anyway, back to the battle. Sky Raider, six kills, 
thirsty for more. And it looks like Control Point Alpha up ahead is firmly in the hands of the enemy team. Can he see a tank there? Because if he can, I sure as hell can't. Uh, no. I guess if he could see a tank there, he would have fired at it. Oh, looks like he's being strafed. Enemy aircraft overhead. Still no sign of enemy ground forces, however. Not too keen on the idea of driving up the middle of this riverbed, however. It's looking awfully exposed. Oh wait, tank! Hit! Engine fire! Is that going to be enough to put him out? Might need another shot. Nope, he's done. Kill number seven. Okay, he's approaching Bravo, which currently is not contested by either team. The enemy team hold Alpha. Sky Raiders team hold Bravo. Not seeing any signs of enemy act. Well, I'm seeing signs of enemy activity. There are burning vehicles everywhere, but I'm not actually seeing any enemy tanks. At the moment, and Sky Raider wouldn't have been aware of this at the time, but there aren't actually that many enemy players in ground vehicles at the moment. Three of the enemy team are overhead in aircraft. And two of them, the P-40... Wait, isn't that American? Yeah, it's a lead lease P-40. But two of them, the P-40 and the LA-7, carry bombs. There is, however, a verbal vin on Sky Raider's team, who's given them hell over there. Tank! Snapshot, bang, engine fire. Again, what a shot. I think he's put the fire out, however. And he's lighting them up with the commander's machine gun on top, hoping to throw off his second shot, but nope, that one straight through the side of the turret. Crew knocked out, killed number eight. Remember I mentioned that two of those enemy aircraft overhead carry bombs? What's that sound? <laughs> Missed me. <laughs> Okay, right. What's next? Well, Bravo's been captured. Charlie is still... Oh, crap. That was a bit close. But, well, yeah. A bit close is the same as missed completely, so it doesn't really matter. But yes, two of the capture points are now firmly in the hands of Sky Raider's team. That just leaves Capture Point Alpha. But Sky Raider is heading directly away from Capture Point Alpha. What's he doing that for? Well, I guess we won't know, because at this precise moment... Capture point Bravo is being decapped. Do you see it? I didn't see it. Sky Raider saw it. Snaps a shot against the T-44. The gun mantlet takes it. He's sitting there. T-44's got him banged rights. And he gets taken out by a friendly panther. <laughs> he was so incredibly dead. Teammate to the rescue. The verbal wind shot down the P-40 as well, so it is actually going quite well. Sky Raider motoring on back to the cap circle. He's like, bloody hell, I can't leave this cap circle alone for one minute. It's not going to take him too long to recapture. And the fact that he is able to recapture tells him that there are no enemy tanks nearby. Well, at least not in the cap circle. Still, doesn't pay to take any chances. Making maximum use of all available cover and concealment while he's sitting here in mobile, recapturing, and he's done it, and tank! Snapshot, bang, straight in the side of the turret. Another enemy tank knocked out. And then out of nowhere, didn't get a very good look at it, but it looked like the enemy Yak-9T comes in and attempts to take him out in the strafing run. Luckily, it looked like most of the shots were absorbed by the rock that he was hiding behind, although he did take a couple of hits, but none of them seemed to penetrate his armour and he hasn't suffered any damage. So far, Sky Raider 98 is on 9 kills, 3 captures, and 2 assists. Can he make it into double figures? Well, of course he can. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> obviously he can, but is he going to? Well, that's going to depend on the enemy team, because there aren't that many enemy ground vehicles left. And again, he wouldn't have been aware of this at the time, because when you're actually playing realistic battles, you don't get that handy little team list on either side of the screen telling you exactly who and what is still alive and what vehicles they're in. As far as Sky Raider was aware, there could have been nothing left but enemy aircraft. Two of his team seem to think so. They've switched to self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. The verbal VIN that shot down the P-40E earlier has now been joined by an Ostvin. There's one enemy player in a ZSU-37. 
although there were also a couple of players still lurking around, potentially with respawns available, and one of them has just jumped into a T-3485. There's one further player on the enemy team who has not yet left the battle and may still have a respawn and be able to join us in a ground vehicle. But you can see that there are players on Sky Raider's team who are attacking something on the ground, on the ridge, over there behind him. And in fact, if you listen, you can hear the ZSU-37 shooting at them. And I think that's what's just grabbed Sky Raider's attention. He figures, well, if somebody's shooting, they must have something to shoot at, so let's go and investigate. And that ZSU-37, that's the guy Sky Raider's looking for, you can hear him shooting. He's not quite done with that uh, AD-2 at the top of Sky Raider's team list. The AD-2 is closing in, doing a ground attack, and he's hit, and he is knocked out, and yep, there he goes. <laughs> well done, the ZSU-37. Now, I'm not entirely sure why Sky Raider did what he's about to do. You could hear that the ZSU-37 was over to the left, and initially it looks like he's going to go over and kill himself as ZSU-37, but then he turns to the right instead. Now, there's an enemy respawn point over there, and while you're playing realistic battles, you don't get the team lists like this, but you can hold down tab and see which players are still active, which players are lurking, and which ones are actually in the game. And I can only assume that Sky Raider had done just that, seen that one of those lurking enemy players had just jumped into a vehicle and thought, well, there's a fairly good chance he might be over here, and he just blew the top clean off that IS-2, and that is, in fact, kill number 10 in War Thunder Ground Forces Realistic Battle for Sky Raider 98. And it's at this point where it all almost went horribly, horribly wrong. Yep, he's hit, and Sky Raider, you're on fire. You're burning, Sky Raider. Use the fire extinguisher. Why isn't he using the fire extinguisher? Well, he's not using the fire extinguisher because he wants to get out of the enemy line of fire before he uses the fire extinguisher so he doesn't immediately get hit and set on fire again. Because while that might be very funny for us to watch, it probably wouldn't be too amusing for Sky Raider. He's looking for the T-44 that shot him, but I think he's just realised, looking at chat, that it's too late. Somebody else has already killed him. And so that's pretty much it. The enemy team are about to run out of tickets. Sky Raider never saw another enemy tank. He's just going to have to settle with three captures, two assists, and ten kills in War Thunder Ground Forces. Realistic battle in the German Tiger E. One hell of a game, I'm sure you'll agree. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.